There are two listening exercises. You must listen carefully. Then, answer the questions correctly. The most important thing is you must do the exercises honestly. I believe it will increase your listening skill. So, Abidemi, you grew up really with two homes.、Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like having two homes? Do you feel any particular loyalty more to one than the other, or are they, are they both home for you?、Ah, that's a good question. I think for me, both places are, ho- are home. Like, I grew up in Nigeria and in Canada. My extended family is in Nigeria.、Mm. So when I go there, I, st- I instantly feel at home. Like, they welcome me with open arms. It's the food, the music, the people, the smell. It's amazing. It's like I almost never left. Except when I open my mouth and speak in English, and it's a completely different accent.、Mm. That's a different story. But then I go to Canada, and I think my way of thinking, my mentality, Is more oriented toward that way. Like, I think more, of a, more like a Canadian, I find in a lot of situations. So, that is home too. A lot of my friends are in Canada. My parents are in Canada. So, I don't know. I don't really feel a conflict of interest most of the time.、Mm. So, I think I'm just kind of enjoying it, having two places where I fit in. More or less. So it is possible、part. for a person to have two homes then? And even more. I think、mm-hmm. it is possible. Yeah. And it's great. It's awesome. So you've been away from Canada for a while now. When you go back there, do you find it difficult or easy to reintegrate into, into your city, into your family's house? Or does it take a, a little bit of time to readjust? It does take a couple of days、mm-hmm. or three because. The, where I live now is different. So sometimes when I go home, just the language, hearing English everywhere and being able to understand what everyone is saying, sometimes it's overwhelming. I'm just like, whoa, whoa, which conversation do I listen to? Do I <laughs> eavesdrop, eavesdrop in on? So there's that aspect. There's also the fact that、um, some of my friends, our relationship is not as close as、mm. it used to be. So, you go back home and、uh, you're talking about, I talk about my new life, and they don't really understand all that I'm going through. And they're moving on with their lives as well.、Mm. So, that aspect is different. And missing my parents as well. But it always feels really good when I go back and see them、mm. and spend that time with them. Yeah, to reconnect. Right. And eating all the food that I've missed being away from home, that's always awesome. <laughs> I always try to make a list to, to make sure I cover everything I want to eat. Is there anything in particular that you look forward to eating when you go back home? That's、oh. the first thing that you immediately make a beeline for?、Um, I love food, so <laughs> it's hard to choose one. I just want to eat everything. I mean, there's pizza,、yeah. the local pizza shop near my house where I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta have pizza there. There's Tim Hortons, Timmy's, <laughs> the hot chocolate, the muffins,、right. love that. There's my local restaurants, I don't know, my mom's cooking.、Right. So it's hard to pick just one thing. I, I really look forward to going home and the food. So, yeah. Yeah, as a fellow Canadian, I know what you mean, especially with Tim Hortons. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen again. So, Abidemi, you grew up really with two homes.、Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like having two homes? Do you feel any particular loyalty more to one than the other, or are they, are they both home for you?、Ah, that's a good question. I think for me, both places are, ho- are home. Like, I grew up in Nigeria and in Canada. My extended family is in Nigeria.、Mm. So when I go there, I, st- I instantly feel at home. Like they welcome me with open arms. It's the food, the music, the people, the smell. It's amazing. It's like I almost never left. Except when I open my mouth and speak in English. And it's a completely different accent.、Mm. That's a different story. But then I go to Canada, and I think my way of thinking, my mentality is more oriented. Toward that way. Like, I think more, of a, more like a Canadian, I find in a lot of situations. So, that is home too. A lot of my friends are in Canada. My parents are in Canada. So, 
I don't know. I don't really feel a conflict of interest most of the time. Mm. So I think I'm just kind of enjoying it, having two places where I fit in, more or less. So it is possible part. for a person to have two homes then? And even more. I think mm. it is possible. Yeah. And it's great. It's awesome. So you've been away from Canada for a while now. When you go back there, do you find it's difficult or easy to reintegrate into into your city, into your family's house? Or does it take a, a little bit of time to readjust? It does take a couple of days hmm. or three because the where I live now is different. So sometimes when I go home, just the language, hearing English everywhere and being able to understand what everyone is saying, sometimes it's overwhelming. I'm just like, hmm. whoa, whoa, which conversation do I listen to? Do I <laughs> eavesdrop, eavesdrop in on? So there's that aspect. There's also the fact that um, some of my friends – our relationship is not as close as mm. it used to be. Mm. So you go back home and uh, you're talking about, I talk about my new life and they don't really understand all that I'm going through and they're moving on with their lives as well. Mm. So that aspect is different and missing my parents as well. But it always feels really good when I go back and see them mm. and spend that time with them. Yeah. To reconnect. Right. And eating all the food that I've missed being away from home. That's always awesome. <laughs> I always try to make a list to, to make sure I cover everything I want to eat. Is there anything in particular that you look forward to eating when you go back home? That oh. the first thing that you immediately make a beeline for? Um, I love food. So <laughs> it's hard to choose one. I just want to eat everything. I mean, there's pizza, yeah. the local pizza shop near my house where I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to have pizza there. There's Tim Hortons, Timmy's, <laughs> the hot chocolate, the muffins, right. love that. There's my local restaurants, I don't know, my mom's cooking. Right. So it's hard to pick just one thing. I, I really look forward to going home and the food. So, yeah. Yeah, as a fellow Canadian, I know what you mean, especially with Tim Hortons. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You will hear the next topic. So now, Dan, you live in Bali, Indonesia, which is a very beautiful place, um, and you do a lot of business in Southeast Asia. Uh, why do you think Southeast Asia is a good place to do business? Well, one of the primary reasons is the lifestyle. Um, if you are generating a reasonable income on Western standards, um, you can, what we do is, you know, perform some global arbitrage. You can take that Western level salary and move it to a developing area of the world, like here in Southeast Asia, and your purchasing power is much greater. So if you're selling products in a higher valued economy, like Germany, and you're living in Vietnam, you're going to be able to experience a much higher lifestyle, and we call that concept arbitrage. Um, you know, currency markets and stock traders have used that kind of concept all the time because they're dealing with very liquid assets. And in our case, you know, our locations weren't always so liquid. It wasn't always so easy to change your location. Now with internet style businesses, it's getting easier. So primarily the lifestyle, I found that that's a great tool for recruiting because staff, they want to have a great lifestyle too. So if you can set up an office in a place like Bali, Indonesia, it's like paradise on earth. It's so beautiful here. People want to join you. And so it's great for recruiting as well. Uh, do you find it's harder to get work done in a beautiful place? You know, I mean, Bali is basically paradise. Can you still follow the nine to five work grind and, and get things done? I find that I get more work done in Bali because the, the cost of living here is lower on all fronts. Not only is food cheaper, rent cheaper, but it's easier to get people to help you out to do things. For example, in the United States, I can't afford to pay somebody to do my laundry. It's too expensive. But here in Bali, I have somebody do my laundry, and that saves me two hours a week. Simple things like that start to add up. It's a very relaxed and healthy place that helps me focus on work. I have a lot of friends that live in New York City, for example, and they spend so much time traveling on the train, making money to afford living there. And I see that as a much more stressful, difficult environment to really be productive and creative. Here in Bali, I have no problems focusing on my work. 
So what kind of what kind of work schedule do you follow? Like, um, do you work every day? Do you work like eight hours straight? Do you work at night? Because uh, you're you're dealing with different time zones, people all around the world. You're, you said your market is mainly in the states. Um, could you talk a little bit about your root, your work routine? Sure. It's actually defined by what I feel like my biorhythms are. Uh, to use a really colloquial phrase, uh, we. Car guys in the United States use this term called torque band, and that's when your engine is the strongest. At what time is your engine the strongest? And for me, that's 7 to 11 in the morning and 7 to 11 in the evening. And right now it's sort of 2.30, 3 p.m. This is generally a time that I would relax. I would close my computer. I would get in the pool. I'd meet with some friends, maybe take a walk, listen to some podcasts, and relax until dinner time. After dinner time, have a coffee and continue working. So it's primarily for me, that just seems to be when I'm most creative, and I have no idea why. Sounds like a nice life. (laughs) Listen again. So now, Dan, you live in Bali, Indonesia, which is a very beautiful place, um, and you do a lot of business in Southeast Asia. Uh, Why do you think Southeast Asia is a good place to do business? Well... One of the primary reasons is the lifestyle. Um, If you are generating a reasonable income on Western standards, um, you can, what we do is, you know, perform some global arbitrage. You can take that Western level salary and move it to a developing area of the world, like here in Southeast Asia, and your purchasing power is much greater. So if you're selling products in a higher valued economy, like Germany, and you're living in Vietnam, you're going to be able to experience a much higher lifestyle, and we call that concept arbitrage. Um, you know, currency markets and stock traders have used that kind of concept all the time because they're dealing with very liquid assets. And in our case, you know, our locations weren't always so liquid. It wasn't always so easy to change your location. Now, with internet-style businesses, it's getting easier. So, primarily the lifestyle. I found that that's a great tool for recruiting because staff they want to have a great lifestyle too. So if you can set up an office in a place like Bali, Indonesia, it's like paradise on earth. It's so beautiful here. People want to join you, and so it's great for recruiting as well. Uh, Do you find it's harder to get work done in a beautiful place? You know, I mean, Bali is basically paradise. Can you still follow the 9 to 5 work grind and, and get things done? I find that I get more work done in Bali because the... The cost of living here is lower on all fronts. Not only is food cheaper, rent cheaper, but it's easier to get people to help you out to do things. For example, in the United States, I can't afford to pay somebody to do my laundry. It's too expensive. But here in Bali, I have somebody do my laundry, and that saves me two hours a week. Simple things like that start to add up. It's a very relaxed and healthy place that helps me focus on work. I have a lot of friends that live in New York City, for example, and they spend so much time traveling on the train, making money to afford living there. And I see that as a much more stressful, difficult environment to really be productive and creative. Here in Bali, I have no problems focusing on my work. So what kind of, what kind of work schedule do you follow? Like, um, do you work every day? Do you work like eight hours straight? Do you work at night? Because uh, you're, you're dealing with different time zones, people all around the world. You're, you said your market is mainly in the States. Um, could you talk a little bit about your, root, your work routine? Sure. It's actually defined by what I feel like my biorhythms are. Uh, to use a really colloquial phrase, uh, we, uh, car guys in the United States use this term called torque band. And that's when your engine is the strongest. At what time is your engine the strongest? And for me, that's 7 to 11 in the morning and 7 to 11 in the evening. And... Uh, Right now, it's sort of 2.30, 3 p.m. This is generally a time that I would relax. I would close my computer. I would get in the pool. I'd meet with some friends, maybe take a walk, listen to some podcasts, and relax until dinner time. After dinner time, have a coffee and continue working. So it's primarily for me, that just seems to be when I'm most creative, and I have no idea why. Sounds like a nice life. (laughs) 